And that brings us to the end of the murder on Maple Drive. Ooh. A poltergeist or a husband gone mad with murderous rage? You, dear listeners, be the judge. Ooh, what a story. Murder, mystery, hauntings. It had it all. I know I won't sleep tonight, Petria. How about you? Oh, absolutely. I can't stop thinking about it. But I'll tell you one thing, Pete. What's that? I still can't believe the ghost actually spelled out, please don't go, in the laundry detergent. Right on the kitchen table. Right before throwing a knife at the wall, nearly missing the wife's head. I mean, laundry detergent. Can you even imagine? We have a horrific crime and a potential demonic possession, and that's the part that stands out to you. All I'm saying is the possession was clearly a defense strategy the husband's lawyer concocted. Why? What makes you say that? Because if not, then it begs the question, if the dead can find cleaning supplies, why can't my kids? Nice, Mike. Thank you. Really, Mike? A drum sound effect? Hey, I'm just putting those audio engineer student loans to good use. Uh Uh-huh. And as a fellow parent, I agree with Petria's assessment. Not all of us can be a free spirit like you, Pete. Yeah, yeah, you know you're our favorite producer. He's our only producer. But he's also our favorite. I don't think we say that enough. Uh Uh-oh, Pete, I think Mike just asked for a raise. And on that note, speaking of favorites, it's time for our favorite part of the podcast, taking calls from you, our lovely listeners. We've traced a call. It's coming from inside the house. Got a squad car going over there right now. Just get out of that house. Mike, want to tell us who is our first victim of the night? This is Anna from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. You're on with Pete and Petria. Hello? Hello? Hi there. Is this Tennessee Anna? Sure as the sun in the mountain sky. How are those great smoky mountains? A sight to see. Y'all should come on down sometime. I was just calling to say my daughter and I are such big fans of the show. Well, that's very kind of you. You know, they put one of those big fancy billboards up near Pigeon Forge with your faces on it. The land of the blue smoke, as Jolly says, just got a little more terrifying with our mugs up there. Especially Pete's. Hey now. No, it's lovely. Last Christmas, someone hung some lights around Pete's head. A jolly sight to be seen for sure. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, and I'm not too far from the Rocky River Motel. Nice. For those of you that don't recall our previous episode on the topic, the Rocky River Motel is said to be chock full of paranormal activity. Folks say the clocks run backwards there. Some folks also claim to have that experience talking to Pete. What, no sound effect, Mike? Not until I get a raise. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, y'all are just so funny. Thanks for calling in, Anna. We'll send you and your daughter a show t-shirt. Looks like we have someone else waiting on the line. I think we have time for one more, right, Mike? Before we make our special announcement? Okay, put them on through then. Okay, we have George from Amityville, New York. Go for George. Can you hear us? Hello? Am I on? Can you hear me? Yep, we hear you loud and clear. Is this George? Hmm, oh, yes, George. That's me, George, uh, Lutz. Got anything spooky to share with us? I have a, a correction from a previous episode. It's just that a few weeks ago, you did the episode about Sunny Hill Lane. Ooh, right. The haunting of Sunny Hill Lane. Right. That was the one about a young family terrorized with strange occurrences until the parents dropped everything and took the kids out of state. They almost died in a car crash, right? Mm Mm-hmm. If I recall, the rumor was it might have been this ancient and evil doll, but really it was probably the wife's jealous ex-boyfriend. She'd been having a secret affair with him. What was his name, Pete? No, it wasn't Pete. Mm, huh. No, no, it was uh, it was Benny something. Stevenson. Yep, that was it. It was uh, Benny Stevenson. What's your correction, George? Hmm? Oh, me right. Well, just that you were wrong about putting the blame on Benny. Um, he cut their brake line. The family was lucky to have survived. You're wrong. Benny had nothing to do with it. How do you know that? Yeah, do you have personal details of the case? Me? No, I... What What did you say your name was? George... Look, George, look. From Amityville, New York. Oh, brother. What do, you, what do you take us for, George Putz? What are you doing, Pete? I'm calling out this guy for trying to put one over on us. George Lutz was the father in the Amityville horror. This guy is bull****ing us. No, I... Pete, language. Don't want to get demonetized. Petra, he's lying to us. Remember the Amityville horror movie we uh, watched the remake together? Oh my god, you're right. Love me some Ryan Reynolds. Same. All right, bud, who are you really? What's your real name? Oh, I, I, fine. My name is, I'm Benny Stevenson. Great. Oh, brother. And, and I had nothing to do with the events that occurred on Sunny Hill Lane. It was the doll, the cursed doll. You have to believe me, please. It was the cursed doll. 
Call has been cut. Thanks, Mike. Wow. Jealous ex-boyfriend much? Oof. Well, that was something. Sorry about that, folks. There are all sorts out there, right, Petria? There sure are, Pete. There sure are. You know, all this talk about Sunny Hill reminds me. What's that? I think it's time for our announcement. Hell of a segue, but let's get to it. It'll make sense in a minute. All right, folks, Pete and I are incredibly excited to share the next week's episode. We'll be coming to... Mike, can we get a drum roll, please? Folks, we'll be coming to you live from... Mike, can you, you can stop the drum roll now, please. We'll be coming to you live from the Wexler House. That's right, the infamous Wexler House, a.k.a. the Tingler House. The supposedly haunted house with so much paranormal activity that no one has lived there in over 40 years. It also happens to be only a few towns over from, you guessed it, Sunny Hill Lane. Ah, I gotcha. Yeah. It's really exciting. We're going to be touring the property and talking with the caretaker. And hopefully I'll be the first to document any supernatural activity on tape. So tune in to what's sure to be our spookiest episode yet, live at the Wexler House, guaranteed to bring you thrills, chills, and maybe, just maybe, some tingles. Until next time, I'm Petria. I'm Pete. And this is Pete and Petria's Petrifying Podcast. Bye. Bye. This has been Pete and Petria's Petrifying Podcast, hosted by Pete Goldberg and Petria Hobbs, with production, editing, and sound by Mike Apodaca. The 4Ps Podcast is produced in conjunction with Blood Moon Harvest Radio and Carbon Moon Productions. As always, don't text and drive. Thanks for listening, and now a word from next week's sponsor. Have you heard things that go bump in the night? Do you get the feeling someone is watching you, but there's no one there? Then you may have visitors of the paranormal variety in your home. Find out exactly where they are with a new and improved Ghost Hunter 2000 EMF detector from Karma Moon. Never be lost in the dark again. The GH2000 opens you to a whole new dimension of communication. I'll be wearing it when we go to visit the Wexler house, so let's put it to the test. It's available where most ghost investigative gear is sold. Karma Moon LLC, the maker of the Ghost Hunter 2000 EMF, is a proud sponsor of Pete and Petra's Petrifying Podcast. Enter code Petrifying for 20% off your first order today. It's Pete and Petria's Petrifying Podcast. It's petrifying. Are we... Is this... Sound better? Petria, I... How about now? Yep. Yep, got it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, welcome to Pete and Petria's Petrifying Podcast. I'm your host, Petria. And I'm your other host, Pete. And as you can hear by the squeaking sounds of Pete's overexcited voice, we are coming to you live. Yes, live. From the one and only Wexler House. The Tingler House. Nice one, Mike. Thank you. As always, we have Mike handling the production side of things. Say hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. We are currently standing outside of the infamous house, waiting for the caretaker to in. And hopefully answer a few questions for us. Right. Like, uh, after the house is done eating, where does it store all the human bones? <laughs> Alright, get it all out now, boys, because we won't be needing any added spooky effects here tonight. I'm looking at you, Mike. No shenanigans from me. He gets scared easily, so I promise to go easy on him. Hey, I told you that in confidence. Anyway, we'd like you to please bear with us, as this is our first live taping. Yeah, no pressure, Mike. Don't mess it up. Ow! Hey! Watch out for the recorder. Sorry, I... Pete, what are you doing? The recorder, Pete. You you punched me in my recorder on you, dummy. I think this means that Mike gets one free hit back. Just uh, don't knock me in the face, please. Yeah, Mike, we all know Pete already has a face only for podcasts. I'm glad you said it, not me. Okay, okay, I surrender. Oh, hey, guys, here comes the caretaker, Herbert. Hi, Herbert. I'm Pete, and this is uh, Petri and Mike. We're glad to meet you in person, uh, sir. You want to say hi to our listeners? Who, me? Oh, oops. Um, hi. Hello. Normal volume is fine here, Herbert. Oh, okay. Sorry. No worries. Welcome to our show. Sure, sure. We agreed uh, two hours. That's it. I've got work to do. A man, a few words. <laughs> so, Herbert, you're the caretaker of the Ting, uh, the uh, Wexler house. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, that's right. And how long have you been taking care of the property? A few decades, I suppose. That's quite a long time. How did you find the job? Yeah, was there like a one ad for a haunted house handyman or... No, no, no. Uh, the Historical Society had me uh, to maintain the property. Well, I must say, we can't thank you enough for allowing us entry into the house. 
after the stories we've heard, it'll be a real treat. Treat? Ha! Nothing but a headache, I tell you. Them ghost stories are nothing but rubbish. Right, well... What was that? What was what? The curtain, look. Up in the attic window, you, you, you didn't see it move or, or hear the knocking on the glass? No, didn't hear anything, bud. Oh, weird. People see an old house and their imagination gets to creating these fancy stories. It was probably a draft. The house may be well kept, but it's still old. I, I, I guess. Herbert, can you tell our listeners the last time someone other than yourself set foot in the property? Hmm. Not since 1978 they have it. Oh, wow. Okay, so P and I will be the first new people inside after over 40 years. Yep. Every once in a while, we get some looky loose peeking in through the windows or going through the trash. But ain't no one been inside these doors on my watch. Incredible. And why has it been so long? Rumor has it that the last inhabitants were a family named Alderman. And from what I read, they had two teenage kids, one of them a Lois Alderman. She went missing, and for 48 hours, the neighborhood searched high and low. And they found her in that attic, rocking back and forth. FYI, for those listening, I'm pointing at the same window I heard the phantom knocking. Anyway, the police report said that the officer found her up there in a state of agitated fear. She looked him directly in the eyes and said, I feel a tingle. And then, boom, she goes all catatonic and institutionalized ever since. Bunk. What's that? It's all bunk. Tabloid fathers, all that is. Superstitious mumbo jumbo. That's why I agreed to having your kids here today with your fancy little talk show friends to prove there is nothing here but a few creaky floorboards. I guess we'll see that for ourselves. Yep, you'll see. I'll just, uh, I'll just go get the keys and let you in. And that, folks, was Herbert the caretaker. Such a lovely disposition, right, Petria? Oh, hush. He might hear you. Come on, old Herbie wet probably went back to his shed or whatever. He can't hear us. What a curmudgeon. Folks, you can't see it, but he is exactly what you'd think the caretaker of a haunted house would be like. It, it, it's uncanny. Oh, Herbert. Guys, look who's coming back. Herb! Ready to let us in? It's starting to get dark. This is as fast as I move. Remember, no funny business, you hear? Leave the place as you see it, exactly as is. Oh my. Wow. Dear listeners, it looks like a normal house. A big and old yet totally normal house. No cobwebs, no dust, no broken furniture pieces. I told you, I'm the caretaker for the house. I take my job seriously. It's beautiful. Thank you. House was built in 1847 by Johann Wetzler. Stayed in the family until 1929. Stock market crashed, the family had no choice but to sell the property. Next was William and Irma Lexington who bought it in a judicial sale. They lived here with their three children until uh, 1942. Moved after the youngest caught scarlet fever and passed away in her sleep. God bless. Ownership then moved every decade or so to uh, late 1970s. Until the Adelmans and Lois. Mm-hmm. Lois was one of the two Adelman kids. The family stayed until her, her father, James, took a position at the State University. Moved the entire family, even Lois. No foul play or nothing. The next owners passed of natural causes, of course, and left the property to the state. It's a full-blown historical society now. Wow, what a history. Yes, thank you, Herbert, for sharing. Of course, of course. People should know the history so they stop creating their own. Right. Yeah, yeah d- totally. no question. Yeah. Well, I live in a little house on the property, just off that way up by the trees. Holler if you need me, but don't need me. Oh, and don't worry, there's electricity and plumbing and all that, so you should be fine if you need it. I'll be by to close up when you're done, and remember, don't touch nothing. Oh, good. Speaking of plumbing... Pete. What? It was, a, it was a long ride. Mike, don't we have like a sponsor for this episode? Sure, you want me to play it now, or...? I think our listeners would rather hear from our sponsor than me tingling. Or should I say tingling? Eh? Eh? Come on, that was the perfect bump before a break. <sighs> just do it. For all of our sakes, Mike, just play a commercial. I had a lovely time tonight. Me too. Would you like to come up for a drink? Sure. Meeting the right person is hard. Oh, wine. How fancy. Make yourself comfortable. So setting the mood is important. <laughs> What's that smell? Uh... Is gas ruining your love life? I, uh, I don't smell anything. Seriously, it's it's like a punch to the face. Did, did something die in here? Instead of your date thinking you have bodies hidden in the basement, get Gas Be Gone. Gas Be Gone is now featured sponsor of a show that doesn't stink. Pete and Petria's Petrifying Podcast. say with 
confident that the plumbing indeed works. <laughs> what? Why are you? Why are you laughing? Wait, did did you guys play the gas be gone commercial? That is an affirmative, my friend. I'm glad you two are taking this so seriously. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, yes, anyway, we are now inside the famous Tingler house. Just me, Petria, and Mike to see if we can't make a few ghost and ghoul friends. I have to say, something has been bothering me. I agree. Pete's jokes aren't usually terrible today. This is true, but it's not that. It's about Herbert's historical account of this place. He said the last family relocated for the father's position at the university. Mm -hmm. But we know that's not true. We do? Yes, we read the article about Lois. She didn't move with her family. There have been multiple confirmations of her last words before going catatonic being, I feel a tingle. Right. Pete, that's how the house got its name. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, I was distracted. This place is just, it's incredible. I mean, it looks like it was last updated before the last family moved in, like a 1970s vibe. The tile, the brown appliances, flower curtains. Folks, I really wish you could see what we're seeing. Everything seems normal, but at the same time, just, just off. I can't explain it. No, you're right. It's like it's been frozen in time or something. By the way, Mike has been taking photos this entire time. He's going to upload them to our webpage throughout the evening so you can see for yourselves everything we encounter. What was that? What? I thought I heard a, a window opening. I didn't hear anything, Pete. You have to get a grip. Your imagination is scaring me more than the house. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay, you're just freaking me out, Saul. I know, I know. It's just a little jittery, I guess. Uh, okay, okay, I'm all good. Oh my god, oh my god, get it off me, get it off me, I'm gonna die. Hey, Louise, Pete! You won't take me alive! Pete, stop! You bought into a curtain and a rod fell. I... What? A curtain, you dummy. You tangled in a curtain. For what it's worth, you put up one hell of a fight, buddy. Har har. Like, with friends like you, a guy doesn't need enemies. Aww. Hey, come on, we better prop this up before Herbert sees what you did. What I did? And the lights just went out. I... Just great, just so very great. Did you hear that? Pete, please try and stay calm. But I... I'm fixing the light situation, Pete. Something just said my name. Don't look at me, I promise Pete, no gimmicks tonight. It was me telling you to calm down. Just give me a second. I think I saw the breaker box off the kitchen. There, I found it. CP, lights are back on, and there are no ghosts. Mike, give me a hand with the curtain rod. Well, there you have it, folks. Just an old house with an old lighting system. Like Herbert said, imagination can run wild. Hey, Pete. Earth to Pete. Hmm? Do these curtains look all right? Yeah, 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 thanks. You didn't even... What the heck is that beeping? A fire alarm? It's so loud. Oh crap, it's the Ghost Hunter 2000 EMF detector. It's going crazy. Oh jeez. Forgot I had it hooked on my pants. Great, so our sponsors have confirmed paranormal activity. Exactly. Cute. Now how do you turn that thing off? There. Hey, do you feel that? Well, yeah. Weird, right? My hairs are all standing on end. I think goosebumps, it feels like the air in the room just changed. Well, folks, this is getting real. I actually think I can feel a presence. Pete? Yeah, it feels like I'm being watched. Come on, you're both being ridiculous. Uh, Mike? I said you two are being ridiculous. No, Mike, look. I know you like to ham it up, but... Mike, Turn look. around! I feel a tingle. Ah! Guess you do believe in cursed dolls. Come play with me. A voice modulator. Pretty neat. Guess you all believe me now, huh? Leave me Who are you? Oh, you don't remember me? Benny Stevenson? Wait, wait, wait. Benny Stevenson of the Sunny Hill Lane episode? Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. What do you want from us? Declare my name. Huh? You slander the good, decent folks and accuse them of crimes they didn't commit. Wait, is this, is this about the doll? Yes, the doll. I found the damn thing dumpster diving in this forsaken place. She was into kitsy relics like that, but it... It was the doll! It's evil! I already ended things with her. I tried to get the doll back, but it was too late. Her her daughter must have found it. All right, all right, that's enough. Don't understand. It was the doll, not me. I had nothing to do with what happened to that family. It's this place. I, 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 I had to leave this place. You're damned. You're damned if you stay here. You'll all see! Yowza! You can say that again. Yowza! Pete, I'm being serious. This guy is clearly disturbed and in need of help. Okay, okay. I'm just glad he didn't come at us. Mike, hey, you okay? Hmm. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, a bit of the shivers. <laughs> I felt a tingle down my arms. Uh, I'm gonna check to make sure he's actually gone. I'll put the recorder down here for you guys, and I'll be right back. Get her to go with you. And the lights are out again. Great. Come on, Benny. The joke has played itself out. Yeah. Mike? Mike? Is that you? <laughs> what, what was that? Please tell me you heard that. No, I... Jesus Christ. It's all around us. Where's Mike? Mike? Mike, is that you? No. Herbert? Get out of here now. We're not leaving without our producer. I should have let her let you in here. You won't go up. I told you not to move anything. You must have the house exactly as it was with our last victim. Who what are you victim? talking? Magdalena! You don't understand. My great-grandfather was Johann Wexler. Johann Herbert Wexler. He built this house, lived here with his wife, Francis, and daughter, Magdalena. Francis made these beautiful dolls. Ma 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 Magdalena caught the fever. All the dolls had to be burned. After she died, it was there in the attic. A new... A new doll? It looked just like Magdalena. They tried to destroy it, but it came back. It kept coming back. As more people disappeared, more dolls showed up, and after I took the alderman girl, I, I, I figured if no one lived here, no one could be taken. No. I heard about the Sunny Hill Lane, the similarities. They must have taken one of the dolls from the trash, but who would believe it, old man? I couldn't risk it. That's why I invited you all here. If nothing happened on your little show, people would forget about the Wexler place, and I could keep her locked up in there for good. <laughs> I feel a tingle. I feel a tingle. The dolls? Yes, Magdalena. Everyone she's possessed. They're stuck here. It's not safe for you. You have to leave. I'll go to the attic and try to buy you some time. Well, what about Mike? What now, Herb? Oh, wait. It's, it's Mike. Hey, ma'am, we've been trying to find you. Mike's not here. What? He had to go to the attic to play with me and my friends. This is, this is super effed up. I'm... I'm getting dizzy. I, f I feel a tingle. Okay, that's it. Grab our stuff. Let's go, Pete. Pete? Pete's not here. Pete? Pete? No? Petria, wanna come play? No. No. No! <laughs> Pete and Petria's Petrifying Podcast, a radio play. Written by David Lipschitz and Dana Hall. Directed and edited by Sarah Edmonds. Starring Tori Bissonnette as Petria, Evan Rodenhausen as Pete, Christian Patchell as Mike and Herbert, Alex Land as Benny, Sherry Hall as Magdalena, and Amanda Sturman as Anna. Feature music includes Don't Go Inside by Wombat Noises Audio, promoted by freestockmusic.com, with additional sound effects from zapsplat.com. Special thanks to Courtney Clark and all the wonderful people involved in the creation of this production. <laughs>